Hey there, and welcome to Gardner Acres. I'm Aaron Gardner, and today we're going to discuss pilot controls on many skid steers and many excavators. I recently purchased a Chinese unit from auction, and I have been doing some modifications to it. On the pilot control remote valves, I installed a spring modification to help with the hydraulics to keep them from kicking back, giving back a smoother, more gradual tension on the joystick. Um, the folks over at PilotSpringMod.com, Jay Flay, sent me over a couple sets and we're going to discuss that. All right, folks, this is my mini skid steer. It is a BTTL ST28H-6. I did win this unit at an auction. I feel like for a fair price. Um, but anyways, today we're going to talk about the pilot control remote valves and the spring modifications that I've done to it. Um, notice on my right side, I already have the boot pulled up. I've already done the modification. Um, but if you notice on the remote valves coming out of the bottom, you got a whole bunch of hoses. Um, on the right hand side, all those hoses, they go down to the main control valve and they control all of your bucket and boom functions. And on the left hand side is all your drive functions. Um, there's also a pilot control filter to keep this side of the system filtered. What the pilot controls do is it's a separate hydraulic feed that has its own pump and it's a very low pressure system and all you're doing with these joysticks is you're opening and closing the spool valves on your main control valve unit which then sends the hydraulics to either your drive functions or your boom and bucket there's also you see that line going across there there's the drain line and there's another one there and it returns it back. And what that does is the drain line, when you let off your joystick, it relieves the pressure is what it does. Because otherwise, if it was a closed system and it didn't have those drain lines, then your hydraulic functions would either continue to drive or lift. And we don't want that. Now, on the spring modification, that was performed and I know a lot of guys are doing it right now um, all it does is it puts puts good back tension puts it back to a neutral zone when you pull it back comes back smoother side to side okay so on this little gimbal plate here underneath that you have some plungers those plungers are called poppets. The brass is the valve guides. Inside the valve guides is a rubber o-ring. You notice the pink grease that's on my springs and on my poppets. It is a rubber grease that's meant for rubber. If you use an incorrect grease it'll break down the integrity of that o-ring inside that plunger assembly and then you're going to end up having leaks so make sure whenever you grease these and you do need to grease these it's highly recommended they use a nice rubber grease i personally use the toyota rubber grease you don't have to do that. You can get a nice molly coat or a nice silicone rubber grease. They can be found on any of your major websites, Amazon, eBay, Walmart, etc. Um, so what happens when these plungers go down? It opens a needle and it allows hydraulic fluid to go through and then you get your functions. And on that needle, it depends how much tension on how much response you get. 
I just want to thank you for checking out my video and uh, thanks for coming out to Gardner Acres. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, live on a little bit of land, have some livestock, have some horses, donkeys, got a whole bunch of dogs, have some Great Danes, a whole bunch of kids, and tons of projects. There's always something to do around here. And I'm hoping you guys will tag along for the ride. So like, subscribe my, to my channel. I'm just getting started and uh, I appreciate it. A um, little bit about me, I'm an industrial equipment mechanic by trade, specialized in electronics, hydraulics, and internal combustion. Um, I'm here to help. I'm not here to judge you. I understand some of you maybe have never turned a wrench in your life, or maybe you have, but you're not real familiar with hydraulic systems. And any way I can help, feel free, reach out. Uh, like I said, subscribe to my channel, uh, reach out to me on Facebook, any way you want. I'm more than willing to help. I work midnight shifts, so most of my stuff will be done during the day or early morning. Um, live on a farm, got lots of projects. I want you guys to tag along for the ride. I'm going to run this machine to the hill. Always something to do. I got trenches to dig, holes to dig, and we're gonna see what this thing can do and definitely what it can't do. Um, I'm gonna do an in-depth review in the next week or so. I plan on documenting the whole thing and hopefully you guys tag along for the ride. Um, if there's anything you need, just feel free to reach out. Also, reach out to Jay Flay on Facebook, uh, pilotspringmod.com. I'm not affiliated in any way. I'm just a small guy helping out another small guy. He came up with a good idea. Well, he went off of another person's idea, and I believe he truly made it better. Got something that's not going to corrode, something that's not going to rust. Uh, he's working on some different versions of it to help protect the chrome on those poppets. Um, but just remember, definitely put a rubber grease on it. Uh, try not to put any other type because I'm, it, it will swell your O-rings and damage them. Um, hopefully you found this video informative. Hopefully I'm not too boring to listen to. And I hope you have a wonderful day.